Hi, this is Mungo Dark Matter, and this is part one of how to create a character in World of Warcraft. Whether you've already created a character, or this is you haven't created a character yet, I'm going to go over some things of interest to you. Now, when you first start off and you create a character, you may just kind of pick whatever race and faction and class that you think is cool or you're comfortable with. Uh, and you may not really be aware of all of the subtleties of all of the, the different attributes. And then later on, as you play the game, you might see other people doing certain things, and you don't have those abilities. And you may want to have those abilities or be able to counter them. So we'll go over some of the aspects that you can change about the character that you already have. Or you may want to create a new character. It's always good to create a couple of characters because you can learn about other characters' abilities by playing some of the other characters so you can kind of defend against them and fight against them a little better if you understand them a little more. Over here on the Alliance side, we have six races. First one is Human. Next one is Dwarf. The one after that is Night Elf. Then we have Gnome, and then Draenei, Worgen, and those are the six of the Alliance. Over here on the Horde side, we start with Orc, Undead, Torin, Troll, Blood Elf and Goblin. Now, all of these different races have uh, different um, uh, aspects to them that may be useful for particular um, classes that you may want to be in or for particular uh, professions that you want to go into. Um, we'll talk to, about professions in another video. So you want to kind of plan ahead and uh, depending on all the aspects you want your character to have and all the kind of optional aspects your you want your character to have. Some of them you can change, but some of them are a little harder to change, or some of them you can't change. So you really want to try to plan ahead a little bit. Go back here to a human, kind of as our home spot as far as characters go. Now, you can actually choose whether you're male or female. And uh, that's just a matter of preference. Whatever you want your character to be, it can be male or female. It doesn't matter as far as strengths or attributes or talents or any of that. Um, they don't delineate by male or female any particular skills or strengths or such. Uh, the next kind of category that you're going to need to select is what class you're in. Now the class is 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 basically how you function within World of Warcraft. For instance, this um, class right here is a warrior class. Next class would be Paladin. Now Paladin is kind of like a warrior. has some of the same capabilities, but a Paladin can do healing and can cast a few holy spells and such. Uh, the warrior has also attributes that the paladin doesn't have. Like, for instance, the warrior can charge somebody. Um, the next class is Hunter. Hunter is good at ranged weapons. Now you have what's called melee weapons, which are like swords and, and daggers and spears and stuff. 
and you have uh, ranged weapons. Uh, some of the classes can use ranged, some of them can use melee, some of them can use both. Uh, for instance, a warrior can use ranged and melee, uh, but they're better with melee. Uh, a hunter can use ranged or melee, but they're much better with ranged. So in other words, if somebody gets close to the hunter and starts to attack him, he can pull out a sword and fight him, but he's not going to have the same hit power that, say, a warrior would have with a, with a, uh, with the melee. So another advantage of the hunter here is you see behind him a wolf here. This is his pet, and the or his companion, really. And the wolf will help the hunter fight. So the hunter shoots at someone, and they start to come towards the hunter. The wolf will attack him. And first of all, keep him away from the hunter, and second of all, try to kill him. And so this gives the hunter more time to shoot from a distance. Because once an opponent gets too close to a hunter, um, the hunter will have to use melee, which he's not as good with. Next class is the rogue class. One of the advantages to the rogue class is that the rogue can actually make himself disappear and sneak up on people you know so people who aren't rogues really hate that if you're a rogue that's like your main deal you sneak up on somebody and hit them as hard as you can and try to knock them out before they can do anything next class is the priest and priests uh, can do damage but they are one of the healer classes paladins and priests can both do healing and healing is important because, particularly when you're in a group, the healers will try to keep the other players healthy as they're getting attacked. And so you really need somebody to act as a healer. And also, if you're a healer, you can heal yourself. Um, you're at a little of a disadvantage if you're going on a quest by yourself and you're not a healer. There are other ways you can heal yourself which we'll go into in other videos, but you've got to be kind of aware of that. Um, one attribute of, of, of one of the races, uh, the Draenei, is that the Draenei actually have an attribute where they can heal themselves, and they can heal other people too, whether they're a healer class or another class. So if you select the race Draenei and you become a warrior, for example, you can heal yourself or other people, so you do have some healing skills. So that kind of makes up for not having the healing skill in the particular class. Um, another way to make up for that is there's a profession called healer, which we'll go into in another video where you can actually make bandages which actually heal you and the better the bandages you make the more they they will heal you so you can heal yourself with the bandages or give the bandages to someone else to use for healing or you can actually sell the bandages to make more gold to buy other things the next class is the death knight now the Death Knight can't be your first character because it starts out at level 55. So in order to kind of qualify for the Death, Death Knight, um, you have to have been another character before. Also, it, the Death Knight doesn't show up until um, the, the Lick King um, expansion pack. So you have to buy an expansion for that the death knight to even show up so it's a more advanced character and it wouldn't be really your first character it would have to be your second character you also start out at level 55 and so it would be harder for it to be your first character if it could be your first character because uh, the lower levels are important for you to learn about 
basic levels of your character and other you know basic levels of the game so your first character needs to start out at a lower level for you to have the ability to learn all right now you see this next icon here is grayed out in that is the shaman class and hum because it's grayed out it means a human cannot be a shaman so you would have to pick something you'd have to pick another race if you want to be a shaman for an example you would pick a uh, dwarf dwarfs can be shamans and here you see here a dwarf is a shaman uh, but you see this over here is grayed out druid. They can't be a druid, which is the last in the selections here. Um, so here's an example where you would, if you wanted to be a particular class, you may have to pick your race based on that. So we'll go back to human here. And our next class is the mage. Mage is like a wizard. Now, the mage has a few um, really uh, nice aspects to it. For instance, you can t teleport to different cities instead of walking or r riding. Uh, and teleporting, of course, is a lot faster than either. Um, as you progress through the levels of your character, you will be able to get mounts and ride horses or griffins and stuff depending on your skill level but when you start out you're on foot basically which means it takes longer to get anywhere now there are other there are other modes of transportation within the game itself that we'll get into later they can help you move around more quickly even if you even if you're not at a level where you can uh, start riding uh, the mage can also um, um, cast spells and uh, hit its enemies at a distance. Uh, can actually change enemies into something else or freeze them to the ground. Uh, so it has a lo lot of nice capabilities to it. One of the downsides to it is um, it can only wear cloth armor. And so in another video, we'll get into different types of armor. But some of these classes can wear plate, which is the most powerful, um, uh, most powerful type of armor. Others can only wear cloth, which is the least you know, powerful or protective type of armor. But there's other types of protection, like um, you have magical shields and such, or holy shields, depending on, on what type of character you are. So you may actually have more protection as a character, even in cloth, than you do in armor. But generally, um, the most protected are characters that can wear plate armor. Uh, although plate is also much more expensive to take care of. We'll go into that in another video as well. Uh, okay, so the next class is Warlock. And the Warlock class is kind of like the mage. It can make, The Warlock can cast spells and uh, such. One advantage the Warlock has is, is it can, is a warlock can summon demon servants and such as you see one right here in the background and they're kind of like helpers kind of like the companion wolf was to the hunter so so they can cause damage to a target they can be told to attack a target um, and such the final class is going to be the the druid class and once again you see it's grayed out here under humans so let's go to another um, uh, another uh, race. We'll go to uh, Night Elf in this case, and you'll see we can change to a Druid right here. Uh, a Druid 
can uh, shapeshift into different animals, and uh, and it can use, and when it shapeshifts into those animals, it can attack a person uh, as the animal. And so it may pick up, you know, speed or strength or, or, or abilities of an animal that are harder to fend off than if he was just in his normal Druid form. Uh, the Druids can also heal, so they're, they're a healer class as, as well. So you'll see now that we're on this last class, we'll go through here. It, it gives you a kind of a thumbnail on all of these classes. And right here it says roll. And you can be a tank, a healer, or damage roll. Uh, Druid is one of the few classes besides Paladin that can be a tank, a healer, or a damage class. Now what this means is a tank is 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 a character that can go and take damage for a group. So in other words, they build up enough shielding and enough um, health so that they can go out and, and draw kind of attacks upon them. And um, pull those attacks away from other people within a group. A healer is someone who will heal people and they'll be healing the tanks maybe, or they may be healing the damage um, rolls because the damage rolls are really killing the opponent. So you really want to protect those. So the healer can heal themselves, a tank or a damage roll uh, character. Uh, often the characters that are able to do the most damage are basically they don't have the ability to heal themselves often. So like your warrior class is generally considered um, either a tank or a damage class. As you can see here, it says tank or damage class. You can be either one of those. But they tend to do your most damage because you, they have plate armor, which is gives them the ability to tank. And they have weapons that uh, can do a lot of damage. Uh, so but they can't heal, you see. Your someone like your priest can do damage or is a healer, and often priests are, are one of the main healers. So um your class also determines kind of your role, particularly when you're you're playing with other people. Um next video we'll get into more of um about these roles and depending on whether you do questing alone or whether you're in a group there are advantages to having certain roles for example the paladin and the druid both can tank heal and, and do damage so they tend to be a little more versatile and so if you're questing alone, you may have a little more uh, luck with those. You won't have as much trouble. You're a little more independent because you don't need a healer. And you can do damage and, and you have a fair amount of um, protection. Hunters are also very independent. Even though they, they only really do damage, they, don't, they really can't be a tank because uh, they don't really take damage as well uh, but they do have a, the companion wolf with them and, and that wolf will actually protect them so so they're a little more independent as, as well um, and so they can do they may be able to go through some quests that other characters may need to actually help to get through uh, but we'll go more into that later um, anyway, so those are some of the, the attributes that you would consider when you're creating a character. Uh, we'll go into a few more later, and we'll also go into you know how to change the appearance a little bit 
of of your um, of your uh, character, which is a little more superficial. Anyway, until next time, this is Mungo Dark Matter, and uh, whatever you do, have fun playing World of Warcraft. What you what you want? What you what you want? Next time on Dark Matters, we'll continue with part two of how to create a character in World of Warcraft. And I'll set up an example character to show you the process step by step. We'll also go through professions, and why you need a profession in World of Warcraft, and how to select a profession in World of Warcraft. Yeah.